um, to uh, Stephen about that. Here's what uh, Stephen Donnelly had to say about the bill for privatising uh, water and making sure that it wasn't going to be privatised in the future and we would vote on it. Yeah, I actually tabled a similar bill myself um, probably about a year and a half ago. So, normally, you wouldn't use the Constitution to do this kind of thing. Uh, I'm not a lawyer, but I've spoken to some very clever lawyers who tell me that, you know, the Constitution is meant to set the tone, if you like, and then the detail gets dealt with in legislation. And normally, the ownership of Irish Water, just like the ownership of ESB, or back in the day, the ownership of Aircom, they're the kind of things that you deal with through legislation, not with the Constitution. But water is different uh, for a few reasons. First of all, there has been this uh, very, very strong reaction against people uh, having domestic charges and essentially paying for water twice, paying through direct taxation and then paying for it again. It, the second issue is the government's position has always been, when I've put it to them and when I looked at tabling a bill, they've always said, look, you, you, you need to trust us on this. There's no way that we would ever privatise the water system. And for what it's worth, I don't think they would. I don't think people in Fine Gael or Fianna Fáil or Sinn Féin or anywhere else would. But what, what the Trump election has just told us is that we don't know what our future governments are going to be like, and we don't know what kind of political view uh, people in the future will hold. So who knows? We, we, maybe we elect um, a more extreme government in 10 years' time, and they have a very different view. So, for example, in Donald Trump's uh, policy position, on he's, he said, you know, there'll be a trillion dollar spend on roads and bridges and all of these things, but what people haven't picked up on is he said he would do it through privatization. He would, he would do it through, you know, privatizing the bridges, privatizing the roads, and maybe a future Irish government would decide, well, you know, it's really okay to privatize it, and that's something that, that nobody, nobody wants. And then the third thing is, we've had some really serious foreign meddling in water. So there's a letter that uh, Jean-Claude Trichet, when he was president of the ECB, wrote to the late Brian Lenehan and said, if you guys want a bailout, there are two structural reforms which we, the European Central Bank, would want to see. And believe it or not, one of them was you've got to start charging people uh, in households for water. Now, no central bank has any business telling any government whether or not it's going to charge for water or electricity or toll bridges or anything like that. So there is this, I think, slightly sinister foreign interest in uh, the water supply as well. So when you put all of that together, I think there's a very strong case to say, whilst one wouldn't normally do this with the Constitution, when it comes to water, this absolutely key uh, natural resource for all of us, um, Let's let's put it into the constitution. Now, what's so, the so consequences I, I think it's a of reasonable that? call? You'll be, you'll be supporting that. So, what's the consequences as regards paying for it? There's this uh, Shannon scheme they're talking about at the moment. They have to raise some money to do that. Uh, this will come from central taxation infrastructure, and at the same time, there are people who'll say, "Hold on a second. If, pe- if people are not restricted in the use of the water by being charged for it, they just leave the taps on all day." Yeah, so there's two different things. Joan Collins' bill, much like my bill, sought to hold a referendum to insert into the Constitution a permanent public ownership of the water supply, right? So this has nothing to do with charging for water. The, the, the bill before the House, which Fianna Fáil have supported and which Fianna Gael have not opposed, so we'll see where it goes, um, is about the ownership of water and saying it can never, ever be privatised. Now, the issue you raise... I think is much more com- complex. So how do we pay for the water system? My opposition to domestic charges has been based on a few things. It's been based on the fact that the system proposed by the government would have cost as much money to run, or indeed did cost as much money to run, as it raised money. So essentially people were being asked to go out into their garden, set fire to money and go back inside. It, it achieved nothing. Um, and that, to me, is, is, is not a sensible thing to do. Also, the way it was brought in without provisions for minimum supply and affordability, ability to pay and so forth, uh, were just absolutely not things that needed to be done. Now, the uh, Water Commission is being set up, and it's going to look at exactly this. So the question is, I think we all agree that additional money is required to upgrade the system, right, to build the water treatment plant in Arklow and water treatment plants around Wicklow and so forth. I think we're all, we're all agreed about that. Um, 
how much that will pull money away from our ability to invest in schools, invest in hospitals, invest in enterprise, we don't know because this got rammed through the doll. There was really no proper financial ana- analysis ever provided. I spent months looking for it and couldn't, couldn't get my hands on it. And so what the Water Commission, hopefully, if they do their job right, will come back They'll say, okay, look, now I'm making these numbers up, right? Let's assume we need 500 million uh, a year to invest. If we can cut costs in running the water system, which they've already started to do and they do in other countries, uh, we think we can find about half of that. That leaves about 250 million euros. So do we want to um, increase taxes or pull money away from schools and hospitals in order to pay that through central taxation? Or is there a much more efficient way of people contributing who can afford to uh, after, a, you know, a, a free amount so you can do your normal things? Um, is there a case that says, look, if you're just living your life in Wicklow and you're doing your thing, you don't pay for water. But you know what? If you've got a swimming pool or if you've got three Jeeps or you've got a massive lawn and you're using five times, ten times more water than anybody else, well, then actually we think it's reasonable that you contribute a bit more. So... The problem is we've never had the numbers. So we don't know the impact on public services uh, yet. My hunch for what it's worth is that um, there are significant savings to be found in how the system is run today. I think that will go a reasonable amount towards the additional money that's needed to upgrade the system. And I think we'll probably be left with a figure, I'm guessing now I could be wrong, but I think we'll probably be left with a figure of somewhere in the region of two to four hundred million euro. Now, to put that in context... Well, Stephen, I'll just have to leave it there, actually, on, on time, but I get the idea, and you've dealt with the two items connected with water, but you're supporting uh, this bill, anyway, for privatise... Well, not for non-privatisation, that water will always be in um, our control as a state and in, therefore the people. Yes, absolutely.